In today's episode, we're diving into the biggest updates from Starbase as SpaceX prepares for Flight 8. The second orbital launch pad is making rapid progress, and the chopstick arms have undergone initial testing. Plus, SpaceX just secured a key legal victory, and a major vote could soon turn Starbase into an official city. Stay tuned for all the details. After successfully completing static fire testing, a key milestone for Flight 8, both Starship 34 and Booster 15 have returned to the production site for final integration and system checks. Engineers are conducting structural inspections, plumbing and avionics verification, and hardware installations, including the booster's hot stage ring, along with other necessary upgrades. Inside the Star Factory, 10 Starlink satellite simulators, which will be deployed from Ship 34 during the mission, have been spotted and will soon be loaded into the vehicle. This deployment test is a critical step in validating Starship's payload deployment mechanism, laying the groundwork for future launches involving Starlink Gen 3 satellites. Once all preparations are complete, both Ship 34 and Booster 15 will be transported to the launch site for a full-stack wet dress rehearsal. This involves loading the vehicle with propellant and conducting a simulated countdown, ensuring that all rocket and ground support systems function correctly before the actual launch. In parallel to vehicle preparations, the launch pad is also being prepared for this crucial testing phase. Over the past week, the launch tower's chopstick arms and ship Quick Disconnect system have undergone testing. The QD arm, responsible for delivering propellants, gases, electric power, and communication signals to the upper stage, was assessed for smooth operation, while the chopstick arms were tested for opening and closing functionality, verifying post-flight 7 upgrades. A successful wet dress rehearsal will be the final milestone before Starship Flight 8 can proceed to lift off. According to an FAA airspace advisory issued on February 20, SpaceX is targeting Starship Flight 8 for no earlier than February 26, with a launch window opening at 5.30 p.m. local time. The advisory also includes backup launch opportunities extending through March 5. Additionally, SpaceX submitted an FCC application last month requesting authorization for telemetry and communication during Flight 8, which indicated a potential launch as early as February 24. With these updates, the most reliable information available confirms that Starship Flight 8 is currently planned for no earlier than February 26, with multiple back updates extending into early March to accommodate potential changes in schedule. However, the final launch date depends on the FAA investigation into the Flight 7 anomaly. As per regulatory requirements, SpaceX must address the FAA findings and implement any necessary design modifications, procedural changes, or additional safety measures before receiving clearance for Flight 8. The second orbital launch pad has made significant progress over the past week, with key developments in both the launch tower and flame trench. Following the completion of cable reeving, actuator installation, and other subsystem integrations, the Tower B chopstick arms showed their first signs of operation. Both arms recently underwent a short opening and closing test, confirming that the systems controlling their horizontal movement are functioning as expected. However, before they can be fully operational, SpaceX must complete the remaining works, including the installation of control and communication systems, sensors, hydraulic lines, and power distribution cables. Once these systems are in place, a series of validation tests will be conducted to ensure operational readiness. These will include a range of movement tests to verify proper hinge operation and synchronization between the arms. The arms will also be moved vertically to their highest position and tested repeatedly to ensure reliable operation. To assess structural integrity and load handling capability, engineers are expected to perform load tests using water bags, simulating the forces the arms will endure during rocket stacking and catching operations. In addition to these, other critical arm components will also be tested. These include the landing rails, which absorb impact during catching attempts, as well as vehicle alignment pins, booster stabilizer mechanisms, linear actuators, and other subsystems essential for stable lifting and stacking operations. Only after successfully parsing these tests will the tower arms be deemed ready for full operational use. Meanwhile, the construction of the Pad B flame trench is progressing rapidly. Excavation has been completed, and teams have begun pouring the blinding layer of concrete, which serves as a stable foundation for placing reinforcement cages that will form the structural concrete base. This base must withstand the extreme stresses and forces generated during Starship launches. At the same time, workers are installing pipelines and conduits for propellant transfer and electrical systems. Additionally, 
Cladding panels have been delivered to the launch site for installation on the launch tower, providing thermal protection for the tower and its critical infrastructure against the intense heat and plume of the super heavy booster during liftoff. Meanwhile, tank farm expansion efforts to support Pad B's operations have shown significant progress. The storage tanks spotted at the port of Brownsville three weeks ago have begun arriving at the launch site and are being integrated with the existing tank farm infrastructure. Several new heat exchangers and pumps are also being installed to accommodate the expanded propellant capacity, enabling faster propellant loading into the vehicles. Additionally, a total of seven propellant storage tanks recently left Kennedy Space Center Turn Basin on a barge. While their destination has not been confirmed, they are believed to be headed for Starbase. The installation of these tanks, along with potential future additions, will significantly increase the site's propellant storage capacity, supporting both launch pads and ensuring sufficient resources for an accelerated Starship launch cadence in the future. At the Sanchez site, the Pad B launch mount is steadily taking shape. Based on the current construction pace, the mount system is expected to be fully assembled within two to three months. The flame deflector system is also under construction, with teams currently installing water spray channels. This deflector system redirects and disperses exhaust gases produced during liftoff while the water spray absorbs heat and dampens acoustic energy, reducing stress on nearby structures. Once the flame trench construction is completed, the launch mount and flame diverter will be installed and integrated into the pad structure. Given the current development pace, Pad B is on track to become fully operational by mid-2025. Recent developments indicate SpaceX is strengthening its position at Starbase through key legal and regulatory wins, shaping how it will operate in the future. The Texas Commission on Environmental Quality approved a wastewater permit for SpaceX's Starship launch operations, allowing the company to discharge up to 358,000 gallons of water from its deluge system into nearby wetlands during tests and launches. The decision comes after Save RGV, a local advocacy group, along with other environmental organizations, filed a lawsuit last October, alleging that the company violated the Clean Water Act by discharging deluge water without the proper permits. They claimed that the uncontrolled discharge threatened wetlands and local wildlife, demanding stricter regulatory oversight, civil penalties, and a comprehensive environmental review before any further launches. However, after an investigation, the Commission ruled that the deluge water discharge did not pose significant environmental harm and that opponents failed to provide new factual evidence or demonstrate direct ecological damage. Critics had raised concerns about potential heavy metal contamination and inconsistencies in SpaceX's permit application. However, after reviewing the available data, the Commission found no substantial basis for these objections and denied all requests for additional hearings or reconsideration of the permit. In my review, I find that based on the parameters of the discharge and the intervening distance between the discharge and the questor's religious and recreational activities, the hearing requesters did not show that their ability to practice their religion or engage in recreational activities will be affected in a manner different than the general public. Turning to the request for reconsideration filed in this manner, I do not find that the requesters identified new factual information or an error that would alter the executive director's decision. So in conclusion, I would deny all the hearing requests and RFRs and issue the permit. Notably, this approval comes after SpaceX was fined $152,000 last year for operating the deluge system without proper authorization. In response, Save RGV voluntarily dismissed its lawsuit against SpaceX for alleged Clean Water Act violations though it continues to challenge a separate permit regarding treated wastewater discharge into the bay. With this permit secured, SpaceX can legally operate the deluge system up to 30 times a year, eliminating a legal hurdle that could have delayed future Starship launches. In separate news, Cameron County officials scheduled a May 3rd election to decide whether Starbase will become an official city. Judge Eddie Trevino Jr. confirmed that the incorporation petition, submitted in December, met all legal requirements including signatures from at least 10% of local voters. Starbase also meets Texas population and geographic criteria for city status. If the incorporation is approved, SpaceX would gain more control over local governance, potentially streamlining regulations and reducing reliance on county and state authorities for infrastructure, zoning, and public services. These two developments, the legal victory over environmental regulations and the potential incorporation of Starbase, represent major steps toward reducing external obstacles for SpaceX. 
With fewer regulatory delays, the company can increase Starship's launch cadence as it prepares for ambitious missions, including NASA's Artemis program and future commercial deep space ventures. At a production site, teams have recently completed the stacking of Ship 35 inside Megabay 2, with the next phases of integration now in progress. Ship 35 is currently assigned to the ninth flight test and could be the first Starship to undergo mid-air recovery using the launch tower arms. To facilitate this, the vehicle will be outfitted with catch lugs, which will be mounted below its aft flaps. These lugs are critical structural components that will bear the forces exerted during the high-risk landing maneuver. Over the past week, technicians reinforced the area around the catch lugs with doubler plates, strengthening the structure to withstand the immense loads of a catch attempt. These lugs and the surrounding airframe will endure extreme mechanical stresses as the tower arms absorb the vehicle's momentum during capture. Once ongoing work is completed, including aft flap installation, remaining heat shield tile placement, and the integration of electrical, hydraulic, and avionics systems, Ship 35 will be prepared for cryogenic proof testing. Meanwhile, Ship 36's nose cone and payload bay assembly have been moved from the Star Factory to Mega Bay 2, marking the beginning of its full-scale stacking operations. Notably, the nose cone has been pre-installed with catch lugs for a mid-air recovery attempt during the 10th flight test. Ship 36 is expected to be paired with Booster 17, which is currently being assembled inside Mega Bay. The oxygen tank section was stacked two weeks ago, and methane tank sections were recently spotted moving into the building for stacking. Once both tank sections are fully assembled, they will be joined to form the booster's primary structure. Following this, engineers will proceed with installing plumbing, avionics, and other essential flight systems, bringing Booster 17 closer to rollout and testing. Now, let's discuss the latest updates from the world of science and technology. Rocket Lab successfully launched the Black Sky Earth Imaging Satellite aboard an Electron rocket on February 19 from its launch pad 1 in New Zealand. This marked the 60th mission for the Electron rocket, a significant milestone for the company. Approximately 55 minutes after liftoff, the satellite was deployed from the rocket's upper kick stage into a 470-kilometer orbit with an inclination of 59 degrees to the equator. This satellite is part of Black Sky's expanding Earth imaging satellite constellation, which provides real-time geospatial intelligence by monitoring global activities and events. The system plays a crucial role in observing natural disasters, tracking military mobilizations, monitoring supply chain disruptions, and detecting port closures. Its data supports government agencies, financial institutions, and logistics providers, enhancing situational awareness and decision-making. Black Sky plans a 6D satellite network for high-resolution imaging with frequent revisit rates for improved surveillance and decision-making. So far, it has launched 18 satellites, including the first Gen Pathfinder and 17 Gen 2 satellites which capture 1-meter resolution imagery from 500 kilometers orbits. The satellite launched on February 19 is the first in the new Gen 3 series, offering very high-resolution 35-centimeter imagery and featuring shortwave infrared imaging capabilities, allowing them to see through smoke, haze, and other atmospheric obstructions. It also features automated detection, identification, and classification of objects such as vehicles, aircraft, and ships, making them valuable for tactical and intelligence applications. As Black Sky continues to evolve its constellation, regular Gen 3 deployments are planned throughout the year to enhance coverage, capacity, and flexibility, ensuring continuous access to high-resolution imagery and real-time intelligence. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, so you never miss an episode.